Well, hello there. In this video, I'm trying to revive this Amiga 2000 motherboard, and that is a Ref 4.1. And I have nothing, so I do have a 2000, but I don't want to disassemble it. And so I thought, what if you get one of these boards and don't have anything? Uh, let's try and construct everything we need to get this thing running. And uh, the first thing is, of course, power supply. And these connectors are rare. And the only one I could find here in Germany is one from Italy. And it cost, I think, 15 euros to ship it for an 8 euro connector. And so I thought, nope. Let's try to construct something ourselves. <laughs> I have this ATX power supply, which I did use in my um, Tower Amiga build. If you didn't see the video, check the video list and you will find it. And it still has my funky A500 connector made of nails, which plugs into the A500 and uh, yeah, it still works. Yeah, so let's go about that and build a power supply for the Amiga 2000. The only catch is, that we will not have the tick signal which is needed to run the machine. So we have to put the jumper 300 here. We have to put that into, I think, this position. Not sure which one is the right position. And you can get these power supplies for 10, 20 bucks on eBay. Or you just buy some old ATX case um, or AT case. And uh, in most cases you will find, haha, uh, one of these power supplies. So John Chucky Hertel has a blog post about how to convert an ATX power supply, but it's not rocket science. I just needed this connector here, which is the A2000 connector. And I wrote the um, voltages or the ground. So we have on pin one to four, we have plus five volts. Pin five to eight is ground. Pin nine is 12 volts. Pin 10 is empty. Pin uh, 11 is minus 12. Pin 12 is plus 5, pin 13 is minus 5, and we have the tick on the pin 14, which we don't use. We have this connector, and this is a 20-pin connector. So this is the 20-pin connector, and we have plus 3.3, .3, which we don't need. We have minus 12, we have plus, tw uh, plus 5, we have plus 12, and we even have the minus 5 here which is great because this is an ATX power supply. So if you have one of the newer power supplies, a 24 pin, you can just buy one on uh, Amazon for 20 bucks or so. You don't have the minus five, which is not critical to test the board. If you check my A2000 repair video from a few videos ago, you will see that there's a little conversion board which you can use to convert the plus five to the minus five. And if you want to use the power supply to really run the, 12, uh, the 2000, you should go and buy one of these little boards, which you can just uh, connect here, and then you get the minus five and all is good. But for now we will leave, you know, if this was a normal power supply, I would leave the minus five out. Since we have it on the white line here, we will use it. So that's that. Okay, so first out of business is the cutting and yes there are adapters for this um, so you don't have to cut it but I will make this my permanent testing power supply so I have uh, a plug for an A500, 5, 1200, 600 already which is this beauty here and um, yeah now I have one for the 2000 in a minute or so and I will cut a length here by the way um, these two the green one and one ground wire, uh, it's called PS on, which means power supply on. So you have to connect these permanently so that the um, power supply switches on if you just switch it on here, because else you would have to push a button, um, like on a case, to actually have it running. So if you connect these, you're good to go, and just switch it on here and it runs. Question is, how do we go and connect to this 
freaking connector. Okay, just found a way to remove the cables from this connector, which is good because these should fit on here, and they do. Yay! Which is great. So we can just create our own connector. I will go and remove cables. The trick is to turn these until you can, there's a slot here, until you can see the pin in this slot here. Then you push that in. And then you turn 180 degrees to the other pin. And then you push in again. And that should, uh, in theory, free the pin like this. Only thing is, these things are not isolated, so I will have to use some tape between these so that they don't short. Okay, I did connect all these connector pins here. And uh, they have these little tabs here on two sides, which hold them in the connector. So if you use some tweezers and push in these little tabs here, you can actually connect them. And what I did is, to connect them good to the board, I will push these in even further on both si sides, and then they will have a bit of grip. They will hold on very nicely. So next step is to um, isolate these with, um, with some tape. So I decided to just use electrical tape to isolate every single pin. and then to go in and wrap it all to a nice connector. And yes, there is a better way to do this. I'm sure there are 3D printed or printable connectors out there which you just use and push the pin in. But if you don't have a printer, a 3D printer that is, and you are just having these cables, then this is the way to go. You could even use the cables on this power supply because you don't need them. At least most of them. Maybe one for the hard drive. Just like that. We have isolated pins and we could use it like this. But you will now go and put some electrical tape around it to give it some stability and keep the things here in place. Just like that. We build ourselves. Nice little connector. So I think we will just leave it on here. It's a safer way to go. We have still some room to check continuity down here, which is good because we can then check all the cables. So we will bring these all to pretty much the same length. We got our connector in place. Now comes the fun part of connecting the various cables. And we do need four 5 volt cables, which are on the ATX power supply, are the red ones. Red, 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 red. Do we have red ones? We do have red ones. We have three, and we have one on the Amiga 500 connector. I'm tempted to just cut this for now and reattach it at a later time just to have these available. Okay, so here's my Amiga connector for later. And we will connect the four yellow cables to the four red cables. Yay! Okay. Four, pins, uh, four pins connected. Nine to go. Now we have the ground wires which are actually black. I hope. Yep, they are, and we need four of these. Okay, so we have our five volts and ground. Now we need our plus 12 on this black wire here. No, wait. Uh, yeah, we need the plus 12 on this, and that is one of the dun 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 dun, plus 12 is yellow, this one here. That's good. 
then we have an empty space so we don't really need this cable here yay not smart so let's just let's just cut it let's cut this right there let's put on some shrink tubing Now we need minus 12 plus 5 minus 5. So minus 12 is the blue cable right here. Like this. And then we have another plus 5, which is another red wire, which we don't have one of anymore. So here's actually something we will not use, which is this cable here so we can just cut one from here and have that and finally we have our minus five which is the white cable if i'm not mistaken yes it is so there we have it our connector is connected let's give this little strain relief looks good looks very good like it. So now we have to take care of all the cables which are sticking out here, which is just putting on more shrink tubing. So cable is ready. I did bind all the other cables together. I left one of these out for a hard disk and a floppy drive. So we have that. According to the internet, it's correct. The yellow cables, so the five volts pin one, are in the connector direction. Everything is plugged in and connected. I think we are good for a test. So let's first test if the power supply likes us. Plug it in and switch it on. It runs, no smoke, no explosion, which is a good sign. Okay, Amiga seems to like it. Video on the 2000 is actually on this side and we need some sound and we need some image let's see if we get a picture now we have a signal and we have a black screen okay so our power supply seems to work but we have a problem and I have I think an idea what it could be so let's take a closer look if you take a look at the battery damage here it doesn't seem too bad but if we grab our chip lifter pro and chip a lift or lift a chip yeah. now we can see We have some nice green around the perimeter. All these pins. CPU has some green, but there's some real green in here. You can see it if I turn it like this, I think. All this nice green gunk here. Take a look at the kickstart in a minute. We have some corrosion here, but I think this corrosion here is what's actually killing the machine yeah, pin just broke so there's nothing to hold on to now completely corroded so we have to replace the socket there's no way around this because we don't even have a pin now to grab onto let's quickly check for the kickstart if there's any green yeah there's a bit of green here so let's go and put some contact cleaner there so we have some socket replacement some socket replacement in the future you might have been screaming at the screen the whole time i didn't see it look at this chip you can notice that two legs are missing but they are not really missing 
that thing is just not right. And let's check if this is even the right IC in the spot. Because it looks like someone just put in hastily, I might say, some chips to populate this. Okay. So I will do the following. I will replace this socket and if the machine doesn't boot then I will check all the chips in a different machine which I know works and then we'll take it from there. Okay, the socket is out and it did put up a fight. As you can see I had to uh, cut it in pieces. Yeah, so let me put in the new socket and then we can test and if it's still not working then we will check for the traces but that one here which I was afraid was cut is not that is good everything else looks to be in okayish condition so the fresh socket is in kickstart is back in cpu is back in let's give this a try maybe it works could be the, just the socket was a bit corroded and with a bit i mean a lot corroded and here goes nothing And it is indeed nothing. So I think we have to investigate a little further. Could be any of the chips, could be the CPU, could be pretty much anything. Let me switch out all the custom chips for good known custom chips and see if that changes anything. So I did change out all the custom chips and still no dice, but I noticed a crack in that socket and I quickly repaired that with some cable binders. And now the crack is barely visible. I have no idea if it still works but I will for now assume it does. And my next um, order of business will be to check the continuity between this and the kickstart ROM because I think there is the problem somewhere. So, I need schematics and then we are cracking. After the machine didn't start, I went and printed myself the schematics, which are for the A500, but doesn't matter because the architecture is pretty much the same for the 2000. And what we have here is the 68K, and uh, what we have here is the Kickstart ROM. And I'm mainly looking for missing connections between the Kickstart ROM and the 68K because these are pretty much in this area here. So this right here is the 68000 and this right here is the Kickstart ROM. So what I did then is I made myself a list of all the pins that should be connected. And we have the 68K pins here. And the kickstart pins here, so pin 1 on the 68K should be connected to pin 22 on the kickstart. And when there's no pin here, then there's no con there should be no connection. And I probed around, and what I found is, for example, that there's no connection between pin 1 and pin 22, but according to the schematics, there should be. So if we put the multimeter in continuity mode and we need pin 1 on the 68k which is here and we want to find pin 22 on the kickstart which is like this you start here with 1 20 and 22 should be here and there's no connection whatsoever Pin 2 should be connected to pin 18, which would be here, no connection. Pin 3 should be connected to pin 17, connection. So here's 18 and pin 2, no connection, 17, pin 3, connection. And I went ahead and did that for all the connections and I found five which don't exist. Pin 1, pin 2, pin 46, 58, and 64. That's not good news, but it's fixable. 
And that is exactly what I'm going to do now. I am going to put some botch wires between these connections on the back side of the board and we will see if that fixes our problem. Okay, I put in some ugly ass botch wires, five of them. If this actually works, I will do this in a much nicer fashion, but for now these are just five botch wires and I will test if it's actually running or not. So let's put in the CPU and the kickstart and see what goes. Okay, kickstart and all is in. Let's start the engine. Ah, flashy, flashy, but still nothing. That's not good. I assume there are much more broken traces. Um, and I just found the ones for the kickstart, so yeah, let's try again. So for testing purposes, I brought out my known good working Amiga 500, just tested it, works fine. And I'm now going to swap over all the chips from the 2000 board into the 500 board, just to see if the chips work. I did create a very comprehensive wiring Excel sheet. I will show you in a minute. Yeah, so let's swap over chips. Let's see if they all work correctly and then let's take it from there. So I did test all the custom chips in my A500 and they all tested fine, even the Agnes. So that leads me to the idea that something else on the board is still defective. And um, yeah, I redid my patch of the Agnes socket here with a cable binder and I found out that if you put the connector on the edge it gives a much better grip and if you do it without the Agnes inside you really get a super tight grip on this connector here. So that is that is good, that should work. It's not ideal but if you don't have one of these um, sockets you can easily use one of these or two of these cable ties. I have two stacked on top of each other, two small ties. And just pull them with, the, with pliers so that they fit really tight. So I did some more testing and um, since I'm procrastinating a little on this board here, I watched a video by Dr. Chris, uh, Chris Edwards, and he was fixing um, two 2000 boards. And he was using a tool um, which I don't know, couldn't find anything on the web, on his, uh, in his description or in the video, what kind of tool this was, because he only shows the part of the screen where you can see the PCB. And that is a tracer for the PCB of the A2000. And I thought, hey, I have to go and find that. And I found one, but it didn't have an A2000 board. So I, again, looked and all the, all the documentation I had previously was this here, and this is actually for an A500 Ref5 board. And I was absolutely rock solid sure that at least the connection between the 6800 and the kickstart should be the same. So the pin out or the pin connections should be the same. And based on that assumption, I actually repaired the board and I had five botch wires because there were two, um, the two front pins right here. See that in the video? Okay. Two front pins here and some pins around here. So I did five botch wires and the machine wouldn't start. And then I got and looked again and I found that in the same service manual there actually was later in the schematics for an A2000 and lo and behold it's not the same. So what did I do? And I found that because I did this before. So I, when I was fixing this board I thought hey next time I fix one of these 2000 boards or 500 board I don't want to go through the hassle of checking all these connections and tracing these things here. I just, I'll make me an Excel sheet. And I have the um, 68K, which is my reference point. These are the pins on the 68K, 64 pins. 
and uh, this is the pin number on the 68k and I have the pin number of the kickstart ROM which it's which it connects to here. So these are all the connections to the Kickstart ROM. I have all the Agnes connections which it connects or should connect to right here. And uh, since these two are the main chips these connect to, I also have two more um, columns for the various CIA, Paula, Gary shenanigans. So these are all the connections that there are, except for some of the um, 74 LS whatever logic. And yeah, I thought, hey, just for giggles, let's check if these new schematics and these connections here actually match my list here. And what can I say? No, not entirely. And I found out that actually data line three is not on pin 18, but on pin 19 of the Kickstarter ROM, that address line 18 is not on line 31, or on pin 31 of the Kickstarter ROM, but on pin one, and that data line 11 is not on pin 28, but on pin 20. And these were three of the botch wires I did. So I just removed three of the botch wires and this happened. And there's no disk drive connected right now, so this takes a moment. But then, ta-da! So all that was defective are two pins, which is pin one and pin 64 on the 68K, which didn't have a connection to the kickstart ROM. And I fixed these, I will show you in a minute on the back side. And that is all there is. I also attached some screws here where screws were missing. So to, there was a broken um, holder for that port that I fixed. But that is pretty much all there is to this board. My power supply works fine. Did some documentation on what that is. Put a pin one sticker on my connector here. You see that? Yeah, so another board fixed. Um, let's put a disk drive on and uh, throw test kit at it and see what it does. Okay, disk drive is attached. Let's start the engine. That should go much faster now. It's sticking. Okay, where's my test kit? Make a test kit. Disk drive. Yeah, looks good. Also attached a mouse. So let's see. Memory test. One Mac chip mem. Let's test that. By the way, that is a mouse that's squeaking here. Next up, we have the uh, controller ports I tested already. Audio works. Video looks good. And finally, the CIAs. Test good too. Nice. Yeah, so I consider this machine fixed. have no plans for that. I thought about putting it in a tower, but you need a real big tower for that mighty board because it's just three centimeters too wide for any standard ATX case or tower. Yeah, so that is that. I will make my Excel table with all the connections for the uh, ref. 4.1 board of the A2000 available in the description below. Thanks for watching as always and until next time. See ya. Thank you for watching Retro is the new black. If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. If you like the video, please share. Every like, share and comment helps a lot. Until next time.
Bye-bye.